Detroit's budget and the resulting cuts have been a hot topic. After the adoption of the 2005-2006 budget, where 90% of the reductions were in public safety, departments were left with only a few weeks to implement the plan, which in many cases equated to layoffs. With that in mind, Mayor Kilpatrick gave Police Chief Ella Bully Cummings an extended 45 days to develop a strategic organizational plan outlining how the police department would operate, maintain public safety, and still absorb an additional $54 million budget cut. Today, we're having a conversation with Detroit Police Chief Ella Bully Cummings to find out how she is addressing the challenges of the Detroit Police Department. Chief Bully Cummings, thank you for being with us today. Why is restructuring necessary for the Detroit Police Department? Karen, you know, uh, the mayor submitted his 2005-2006 budget to the Detroit City Council, and their working group came back with an additional reduction of about $54 million. And let me explain that. When the police department prepared and submitted its budget to the mayor, it included a $43 million savings just based upon um, some vacant positions in the department and taking the turnover savings. And that is the budget uh, that the mayor submitted to the city council. And the reason for that was the mayor did not want to lay off Detroit police officers. so. The police department's budget was submitted with $43 million worth of savings. Detroit City Council came back, and in addition to the $43 million uh, reduction in the police department's 0506 budget, they included an additional $54 million reduction, which is equivalent to about 600 police officers. And so that is why we have had an accelerated pace of restructuring the department. Uh, you should know that we began looking at restructuring this department last year. One of the things that we did do was take a look at, a, at our uh, investigative operations area, which is the detective function. And because we wanted to make sure that there was continuity and consistency in the way uh, criminal cases were investigated across the city, we centralized that function and then decentralized the people to the precincts across the city of Detroit. But in addition to that, in the summer of last year, we closed down one of the precincts, uh, which was inevitable, but we had to push that date up also. So restructuring is necessary because there's no way to find a $54 million reduction in the department without the layoff of police officers. Now, outline your process for us in terms of developing your uh, restructured department. What process did you follow? Well, we put together a group of experts on the department, and we took a look at calls for service, violent crime, property crimes in the city of Detroit, population, population density per square mile. Uh, we took a look at historical data. Uh, why do we have 12 police precincts, mm -hmm. or 13, up until last year? And there was no rhyme or reason to any of it other than that's just the way it has always been. So we took a look at um, if we redesigned how our city looked as far as police facilities and police service areas, whether or not we could find some efficiencies. And we were able to do that. Um, we have to date 12 police precincts. And because we have 12 police precincts, there are redundant um, functions that exist. We have to have a certain number of people working behind the police station desk every shift, and we have three shifts in each precinct. And they would be people like the, the clerk that deals with processing the paperwork associated with a prisoner. Uh, we have to have officers who take reports. We have to have officers that tend to the prisoners in the holding facilities. And in each precinct, they have various positions that are not necessarily uh, people that respond to calls for service. These are citizen calls for service. Your community relations officers, your abandoned vehicle officers. Um, so you have positions that exist at every facility, and we have 12 of them. So if you add up the number of those positions, because there are 12 precincts, there are 421 people that are either sitting behind a desk or performing a function that does not respond to a 911 call for service. 
And so what we did is we identified these positions and recognized that if we eliminated the number of police facilities that we had, we would find about 252 officers that we could redeploy to work patrol. So this isn't just a restructuring, this is a streamlining for a more efficient and a more effective department. It is. It's radical uh, because you're talking about going from 12 police precincts to six district stations, and I'll explain what I mean by district. Uh, but we have to do it because our population is smaller in the city of Detroit, and you don't have as many people per square block that we used to have. Mm -hmm. uh, years ago, let's just say back to 1960, where we found that we had 13 police precincts, there were 1.6 million people in the city of Detroit. So there was a greater density per square block than we have today. Um, it was something that we were looking at before City Council imposed this additional $54 million, but we were going to do it at a different pace than we are today. We just had to accelerate uh, because of the reduction. Today what we're looking at when we say six police districts, we're talking about collapsing two precincts into one district. Uh, ideally, the optimum way to do it is to redraw boundaries. We don't have that luxury because it takes probably it would probably take about a year to do all 12 precincts to form six districts. Um, so we're taking two police precincts and creating one district. So that will allow us to have 252 additional people to de deploy to patrol. Chief, what does the restructured police department look like? Karen, first, um, we have to take one step back, and, and that is we have to talk about two different things. The Department Restructuring Committee took a look at uh, what kind of patrol force we would have if the $54 million reduction was implemented in the Detroit Police Department. And in good conscience and in public safety, we could not r recommend to the mayor that he lay off 584 officers. The committee recommended uh, only absorbing, absorbing a layoff of 150 officers and gaining the efficiencies by collapsing precincts into districts. Because we own all of our police precincts, we would only have patrol operations functioning out of six police facilities. We would mandate the number of officers that would work desk operations we would mandate the number of support uh, personnel that each precinct could have. So there's going to be an impact no matter what, whether you do 584 layoffs or 150 layoffs. But the 150 layoffs, the efficiencies that you would gain by eliminating redundant functions would allow us to deploy per shift an additional 10 to 20 cars. So again, you're strategically streamlining the operations of the police department. You're minimizing the layoffs. We're looking at only 100 as compared to a projected 600. 150, right. 150 mm -hmm. as compared to a projected 600. Yes. Uh, a condensing of resources, um, both human and uh, the resources within the now districts as opposed to precincts. Mm -hmm. uh, can we see at the community level a more efficient, more visible police department under this restructuring? That is our goal um, because we're also in the district concept we're creating what we call police service areas. See unfortunately today what has happened over the years is the concept of community policing has really gone away as far as um, patrol cars. Patrol cars today because we're, we have such a shortage um, they may get assigned a specific scout car area and when they're deployed out on the street they may end up getting a run all the way to another end of the precinct so the whole community policing concept is maintaining the integrity of the scout car that's assigned to a specific area in the, poli in the uh, police uh, service area mm -hmm. so you'll have a car and it's changing it's really changing the mindset and the culture of the entire department right now uh, police dispatchers will send a scout car that may, let's just say scout 86, and it may take 86 and send it to scout car area 814 mm -hmm. on a call for service. 
um, going forward because we're going to have greater efficiencies and more police scout cars on the street. The mandate will be that they have to remain in their area unless it is a priority call that will take them out. But m removing them from their specific police service area could only be to the border. Uh, so we'll have greater efficiencies. What it will allow officers and the community to do because officers will be mandated to stay within their specific police service area is allow the officer whose permanent assignment is at police service area to get the know, to know the community in which he or she services. Chief, can you tell us what the communication strategy is to ensure that residents are accurately informed of your restructuring plan? Karen, we're going to do a couple of things. There will be several town hall meetings throughout the city. Um, command executives will be attending community uh, meetings we will have a DVD that we will be using uh, to do presentations at community meetings, block clubs, uh, whatever forum a community would like for us to come out and update them on. We're going to run um, the same information uh, across some of the cable stations. Uh, but we'll have town hall meetings and we'll give people an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, so that they can clearly understand where there will be increased visibility even after layoffs. Now, does this compromise the safety of the city at all? You know, the new restructuring of the department will increase the number of patrol units that we have out in the city of Detroit by over 50 cars every 24 hours. And I think that that's significant. You're talking about a plan that will allow us to put 50 additional patrol units, uniform patrol units in the city of Detroit every 24 hours. Because what we've done is we've taken our efficiencies of inside personnel sitting behind a desk and redundant positions that has allowed us to redeploy several hundred officers mm -hmm. back onto the city streets. But in addition to that, the other side of the department, which is not the patrol area, consist of investigations and business functions. We're reallocating over a hundred or more officers from those functions and putting them uh, into areas such as narcotics and homicide and gang squad. Because those are, even though they're not uniform patrol functions, they are critical police functions that support uniform police officers on the street. And while visibility is certainly a deterrent to crime, there's a role that the community can and should play in your restructuring. What role is that? You know, the community always has a role in every single police department, uh, especially in the Detroit Police Department, because that's the only way to get our message out. And the community tells us and works with us to bring resolutions to the problems that are affecting their, their specific neighborhoods. Um, they help us to understand what is going on in their neighborhoods and how we can work with them to resolve it. See, people can't rely upon the police department to resolve every problem that exists in the neighborhood. And that is why it's important that they know and have the tools to assist them and their role as community leaders in impacting the, the issues that exist in the community today. And so those are individuals organizations, mm -hmm. churches, everybody that has a, a presence or an interest in the yes. city of Detroit. Yes. Chief, as with any budget cuts, there's a downside, of course. But what are you doing or what have you done to make sure that the changes that you're implementing will be the right changes? Well, we focused on what our role is, our core role is as a law enforcement agency, and that is to provide public safety. And that is why it is so critical to ensure that we have an adequate number of patrol cars on the street to respond to citizen calls for service. And it goes hand in hand with investigating crime to impact and reduce, because we've had reductions, and I, and I think that's one of the things that people need to know. We still have reductions in our aggravated assaults by firearm and homicides this year versus last year, where other cities across this country, and I mean multiple cities, are still rec 
they're they're facing double digit increases so we want to make sure that our core service uh, is functional and that there are adequate people uh, to manage that but there is going to be some impacts and, and an example would be where today people can come down and get copies of uh, record clearances five days a week uh, that may be reduced to two or three days a week. Um, people come down to police headquarters today to pay the amount of money to get a copy of a police report and an accident report. Well, that's a function that we're going to transition back to uh, the police district. And it will help people in, in, in the sense that they don't have to come downtown and then go to the police station. They'll just go to one place. But we may limit the hours that you can obtain a copy of a report. Mm -hmm. So there always will be an impact, and we're just trying to minimize it and make sure that the bulk of our resources are dedicated to the core service of public safety. So Chief, uh, encapsulate the restructured Detroit Police Department. Summarize what it'll mean. It will mean that we'll have greater efficiencies because what we've done is we've taken redundant uh, functions and collapse them so that we have a district and we're able to take those officers that today uh, sit behind a desk or are performing functions that are not related to responding to a call for service or investigating a crime and putting them on the streets on patrol so we're able to increase the number of scout cars that we have out there. Um, we're collapsing 12 precincts into six districts and I, I, one of the pieces that we did not talk about is what do we do with those six buildings? Uh, because now districts will operate out of one police facility and people need to understand that it's not where the police facility is located because officers don't respond from the station. They're responding from the streets. So people need to know that just because their police facility that they're accustomed to today is not a patrol facility, that their safety is not compromised because we're going to have more cars on the streets and officers don't respond from the police station. We're going to continue to use the facilities that are going to be vacated by patrol operations for other police functions because we own these police buildings and we want to get out of some of the expensive leases that we have. So as our leases expire, we're going to put some other police operations in these vacated facilities um, that were vacated by patrol. Now, is, it, is this an ongoing process where you continue to kind of rework and reshape this restructuring plan as circumstances change and time goes on? It has to be an ongoing assessment because we want to take a look at whether or not um, there are issues with calls for service, um, violent crime, property crime, whether or not we need to make some adjustments in the patrol cars in each district, um, and the community. We need the community uh, to participate in this whole process. So you have to do assessments and analysis, and it does not preclude us from going, as we move forward, from saying, you know what, we need to redraw the precinct boundary lines to make sure that there is balance across the board. And how soon will these changes be evident to residents in the city? Towards the end of September they will see an increased number of marked units on each shift in the city of Detroit. Well, Police Chief Ella Bully Cummings, thank you very much for your candid discussion about the restructuring of the Detroit Police Department and what it'll mean for the residents of the city of Detroit. We appreciate your commitment and dedication to helping to keep our residents and our city safe. We thank you and your officers. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Since April, Detroit's budget and the resulting cuts have been a hot topic. 
After the adoption of the new budget, where 90% of the reductions were in public safety, the Detroit Fire Department was left with only a few weeks to implement the reductions, which would have called for nearly 200 layoffs. With that in mind, the mayor gave Executive Fire Commissioner Tyrone Scott an extended 45 days to develop a strategic organizational plan outlining how the department would operate, maintain public safety, and still absorb an additional $15 million budget cut. Today, we're talking with Commissioner Tyrone Scott to find out how he is addressing the challenges of the Detroit Fire Department. Commissioner, can you tell us how you used your extended 45 days to develop your restructuring plan? Karen, we had to go look at the entire department from top to bottom, side to side. The extra days allowed us to review what an impact the uh, vetoed budget would have on the department's daily operations. We looked at fire prevention, public fire education, fire suppression, EMS, you know, the management of our vehicles and so forth. And I can assure you that after looking at it from top to bottom and side to side, we believe we have the, the best plan to answer the additional uh, budget cuts that have to be made. And as a result of your restructuring plan, what will the new fire department look like? Well, let me begin by saying that we will eliminate at least two engines and two ladder trucks and one TAC unit, and the TAC is a mini pumper. We feel that the remaining fire companies will be able to answer the calls for service that come in. Granted, some of the travel times will be a little bit longer, but our facilities, for the most part, with the exception of about six of them, are 80 years old, and, and they were built at the time when the locations that they have were convenient. Well, we have to use those locations now, and uh, we're using them to the best of our ability to put the right apparatus in the right location to respond and fill into those areas where we've deactivated companies. Commissioner, can you tell me if your restructuring plan calls for any layoffs, and if so, how many? It, it's hard to not do layoffs when you have to cut $15 million, additional million dollars from your budget that wasn't anticipated. The answer is yes. We've looked at it from all four sides. The cuts will be made in the firefighting division. That's where the largest uh, appropriation cut was recommended, which was $13.2 million from fire operations. The number of people that we will affect is 79 firefighters. Keep in mind that we looked at other operations, as I mentioned earlier, public fire education, we believe that has to continue. That, that helps us in every aspect. Fire prevention activities has to continue. And uh, we still have training, we still have apparatus. There's a lot of support functions that have already taken a cut in the initial budget reductions that still need to go on. When I spoke with the police chief, her restructuring plan called for officers who were working behind the desk to be, to be deployed on the street. Does your restructuring plan have a similar component? Yes, it does. We not only answer calls for service for EMS runs and also fire runs, we have several people that are detailed out of the battalions, meaning the fire battalions in the field, much like police precincts, who have a connection to the community or have a connection to administration or have a connection to some of our capital uh, improvements that we're making so that we could reach out and make sure that the department has a representative at all those levels. What we're imposing is that all folks that are detailed out of battalions, uh, employees, will be turned back to those battalions from these detailed temporary positions in order to staff the companies that remain in the community. Now there will be some engine deactivation? Yes, we have uh, two engines that are going to be deactivated, um, engine 21 which is at Linwood, Linwood and Calvert and engine 47 which is at Mount Elliott and we also have two ladder trucks that are going to be deactivated, uh, ladder 16 at Helen and Miller and ladder 24 is at Livernois and Curtis. And Commissioner for clarification purposes, tell us what deactivation means. Deactivation means that manpower permitting, we fully intend to put that company back in service. Um, we have a contract, 
we have to abide by the contract. There are specific days that are off that are, you know, uh, regulated by the contract. And on days when we have extra staffing, we fully intend to try to act, reactivate those companies. In other words, we don't want to close them down uh, permanently. Uh, we've also discussed perhaps leaving the apparatus in the quarters rather than removing it so that if we need to use it, it's already there. Are there any other important components that you want to make sure that the citizens of Detroit are aware of? We will be transferring all but three of the personnel from our Engine 20 location, which is at City Airport, to fire station locations to augment the uh, staffing at, at those uh, additional firehouses in the area. Um, we will also do everything we can to keep our daily staffing up it's obviously got to change if you're deactivating five companies. It's going to drop, I believe, from 266 to 247 people a day. And we are working with the union to try to come to an agreement uh, to have uh, uh, fire personnel in the field work an extra day. Now, what does this mean for community safety? Is it compromised in any way? We have to understand if you take a ladder truck or an engine out of a fire station location, that's one resource that's not available and in our selection process of what companies to deactivate, we had to look at what engine companies would fill in for the engine companies that were eliminated or what ladder companies would fill in for the ladder companies that were eliminated. Their geographical location plays heavily into that. Of course, we look at population and uh, the type of hazards in the area, but given the physical facility locations that we have to work with, as I mentioned, some that are 80 years old, and the fact that uh, our apparatus is very large and some places they may not fit, we want to make sure that we have a good spread of these vehicles uh, to fill in when a call goes out. But the travel times for some locations will be a little bit longer. Now, what are you telling the rank and file uh, during this restructuring process? That we have to do more with less. Uh, we have to work uh, with the, uh, the budget that we're given. Uh, we've had tremendous investment in the fire department over the last four years uh, to the level that I've not witnessed since I've been on the department and that's a good thing. It's tough you know when you lay off people uh, both uniform and civilian but everybody's got to work together uh, to utilize their resources uh, judiciously and uh, with no waste and, and, and really make yourselves available do everything you can to control your area of responsibility. Now what can the community do to help support your restructuring plan? Well, with, with, it's without question that we in our public fire education we always talk about you know fire safety in the home, fire safety in the business, uh, using uh, uh, flammable materials properly and you know matches and cigarettes, anything that produces a flame. We, we, we teach that around the clock. What I want them to do is continue to focus on safety. Of course, we do have a high number of, I should say, false calls mm -hmm. that don't require our services, both on the EMS and the fire side. If that's eliminated, obviously, to a lesser degree, we'd have less runs to go on, which would make EMS and fire vehicles more available. But if uh, they would just use safe practices in the home, and uh, do whatever they can to eliminate any calls that would require us not to be of service, that, that would be appreciative. Well, Commissioner, thank you for taking this time to explain your restructuring plan to the citizens of Detroit. We applaud your commitment and ongoing dedication to keeping the citizens of Detroit safe. Thank you, Karen. Thank you.